Let's start with some basic definitions and concepts which are going to help you to understand the process of calculating the wind pressures. On the left side of this page, you can see there are some legends which are defined by Australian code or AS 1170.2. Let's look at one example here to understand these legends. If our wind is in this direction, this side of the wall is called windward wall, the other side of the wall is called leeward wall, and two other walls are called side walls. For the roof, we might have three different written legends depending on the direction of the wind and the slope of the roof. In this specific case, we, uh, this both sides of the roofs are called crosswind roof slope. In this example here, with the wind blowing in this direction, this side of the roof is called upwind roof slope, and the other side of the roof is called downwind roof slope. So now let's look at um, a very important concept about positive and negative pressures. So we want to understand when do we call a wind pressure as a positive pressure. The fundamental is that when the wind is toward the surface or is pushing the surface is considered as positive and is when, when it's away from the surface is called negative pressure. So, for example, let's look at external pressure for this building. So, you can see in here, the wind is toward the surface, and then for the roof as well, on any surface around this building, if the wind is toward the surface, is considered as positive. For the internal pressure, the concept is the same, just the wind is blowing from the inside. So, for example, from this side to from this side on the roof, from the um, rear wall. So, all of these considered as positive pressures. So, now let's look at the uh, actual building. When the wind is blowing in this direction, we have a positive uh, pressure in this direction because the wind is blowing in this way, it's pushing this side. And on the other side, we are going to have suction or negative pressure, and it's because it's away from the surface. Also, for the roof, we might have positive or negative pressure depending on the uh, roof, uh, the slope of the roof. So here it, you, uh, you can see the plan and elevation for this building, and it's showing uh, the wind when it's applied in this direction for the windward wall, for the leeward wall, and for the two side walls. Um, and as you can see, the side walls are negative because they are all away from the surface. Also, for the leeward is negative because it's away from the surface, and for the windward is positive because it's toward the surface. Let's define our building that we want to calculate the design wind load for. This building is an office building located in Sydney and it's 50 meter high. The horizontal dimensions of this building is 25 meter by 70 meter and the natural frequency of this building is greater than 1 hertz. The roof is flat with a 0.9 meter high parapet. Also, this building is located in a suburban train area in all directions. Our first step to measure wind actions on this building is to calculate design wind speed or V design and theta. Theta is shown in this picture in here, which shall be taken as the maximum cardinal direction side wind speed or V side and beta, which is shown in here. Linearly interpolated between cardinal points within a sector plus and minus 45 degree to the orthogonal direction being considered. 
So this beta is shown here, which is related to the north direction, south, east, and west directions. A conservative approach is to design the structure using the wind speed and multipliers for the worst direction. For example, if we have a building located on a hill, then it, uh, it may be easily checked that the V side and beta on the exposed phase would be the worst case. To simplify the design, this value could then be used as design wind speed for all directions on this building. The second step is to measure wind pressure on different sides of the building with this formula, as you can see in here. P or wind pressure is measured in Pascal and is a factor of rho, which is density of the air, which is um, 1.2 kilogram per cubic meter. V design and theta, which we have explained before. C fig, which uh, is aerodynamic shape factor, which we are going to go to a lot of detail in the next few slides. And then C dynamic, which is dynamic response factor, which is usually one, except where the structure is dynamically wind sensitive. This is usually the case for very tall buildings. And then we have a Z, which is tributary uh, area for the wind. So what we need to do in here is to calculate this wind pressure on different sides uh, of this building. For example, if the wind is applied in this direction, then we have windward pressure applied on this side of the building. Then we have leeward pressure on the uh, rear side of the building. And then we have side wall pressures. And finally, we have roof pressure, which we need to calculate. Each one of these pressures have their own uh, parameters and factors that we need to calculate. 